Good morning, everybody. Mitch Jackson, California lawyer out of Southern California. I want to talk to you today about my thoughts regarding internet fraud and internet crimes. They're inexcusable. It's growing at rapid rate and it needs to be stopped. The problem with internet crimes is that victims are oftentimes silent. The problem with internet crimes is that oftentimes the perpetrator it's difficult to catch. And the problem with internet crimes is that it keeps honest business people from being able to engage in an honest business in a way that helps others, in a way that builds trust, and in a way that helps the economy become better. Turn this around. Hey, everybody. It's going to be a great Monday. It's going to be a great week. My name is Mitch Jackson. Let me put things into context about internet crime and internet fraud, share some thoughts with you on this topic, give you some ideas on how to deal with it, and uh, hopefully help you more safely engage in business on the internet. There are serious consequences to people who are engaged in internet fraud and internet crimes. I want to share state and federal laws with you. I'm talking about fines of up to $1 million. I'm talking about jail penalties uh, and jail time up to 20 years. This is serious stuff, and people need to be aware of it. A uh, couple of things. Let me put things into context, you guys. Practicing law in Southern California for 30 years, I've watched the Internet grow long before the Internet came along, long before social media, long before live streaming. There's been fraud. And there's been lots of fraud. And the problem with fraud, and what I didn't realize until I became a lawyer and, uh, you know, reluctantly oftentimes found myself at the courthouse, in the corners of the courthouse with people who had committed fraud, people that are very, very good at committing internet fraud and, and, and on and offline, you know, before the internet are very, are people that are very, good at developing relationships. They're very good at connecting with other p people. They're very good at bonding with other people. Uh, Bernie Madoff was able to do this with some of the smartest people in the world to the tune of about $50 million. $50 billion. That's B, billion with a B. And if it can happen to them, they're charismatic. If they can happen to some of the smartest people in the world, then it can happen to all of us. Okay, and that's why I want to take a, a moment and share my thoughts with you about internet crime, internet fraud, and exactly what you need to do to protect yourself. So do me a favor, before we dive into the show today, while I sip my cup of coffee, it's still somewhat early here on the West Coast, please swipe up on your Android, sweep, please swipe left to right on your iPhone, share today's Periscope with your audience, both on Twitter and Periscope, let's all protect each other. We are a community. We're here for each other. We all bring different uh, values and abilities to the community, and we need to engage as a community to protect each other. And I thought what would be a good show today, for many, many different reasons, is to share my thoughts on, on Internet fraud and Internet crime and what we can do to protect ourselves. So, a couple of things. One of the biggest issues I've seen with Internet fraud is that it's a crime where oftentimes victims don't come forward for a multitude of reasons. Either the dollar amount involved is so low that they don't feel like it's worth bothering anybody over. Uh, oftentimes they're embarrassed about being scammed. Oftentimes uh, there are other reasons, okay? And suffice it to say, the problem with internet fraud and internet crimes is that oftentimes there are many, many more victims than anybody knows. And unless people come forward and share their experiences, share their thoughts with what's happened to them, other people aren't even going to know that there's a fox in the hen house. And, you know, we all know of all different types of internet crimes and internet fraud, okay? And this show is not about anybody in particular. And this show is not giving out legal advice. I am a lawyer here in California, but I'm not your lawyer, okay? What I want to do is just share some good information with you about how to protect yourself. The first thing I'd like to share with you is that you need to know that in each state across the country, if you use the internet, social media, any of the digital platforms to fraudulently induce other people to give you money, 
you will be found guilty of a state or federal crime if you're prosecuted. There are laws in the books across the state, across the states, in each state in the United States, that will find a person who uses the online platforms to defraud other people of money uh, guilty of a crime. And if they're prosecuted by local authorities, then they are looking at a jail sentence and they're looking at a, a uh, uh, financial penalty in the criminal courts. That doesn't even take into consideration what may happen to somebody in the civil courts. For example, if somebody defrauds me, I can file a lawsuit in civil court uh, independent of the criminal case for money damages. And if it's intentional, I can fine, file a lawsuit for, for punitive damages to punish them to deter these people from, from defrauding other people. So there are many, many remedies that you can bring against somebody that's committed internet fraud. Each state is different. And what we recommend people to do when they come to our law firm, this happens all the time, unfortunately, is we recommend that if you've been a victim of internet fraud, if somebody has taken your money under false pretenses and hasn't performed, you need to go to your local police department, you need to go to your local sheriff department in your state, in your city, in your town, and you need to file a criminal report. You need to have professional investigators follow up uh, with your concerns, they'll contact the person of interest and they will independently investigate whether or not under those state laws a crime has been committed. If you don't do that, if you, as Nancy just says, don't sit back and ignore it, if you sit back and ignore it, then what's going to happen is, and I know it's the easy way out, but what's going to happen is there are other victims out there, okay? And, you know, put it into the hands of the local police department so that you know what, if you're wrong, if something, if something illegal didn't happen, they'll get to the bottom of it and they'll come back and let you know. The chances are though, if something walks like a duck and quack, quacks like a duck, you know, there's probably where there's smoke, there, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So file a report with the police department at your, in your local state, in your local town. That's the first thing you need to do. Oftentimes that will nip the problem in the butt right away. Number two, uh, oftentimes when somebody is fraudulently uh, representing facts in exchange for trying to acquire money from other people online and they're using the digital platforms, uh, that's a transaction that's being digitally communicated between states, okay? And when that happens, yeah, thanks for sharing, Nancy, I appreciate that. Can everybody swipe up on your Android, uh, left to right on your iPhone and share this out because I am going to get into some tips to help protect you from internet fraud and internet crimes. If you would, I really appreciate it. If you guys like what you're hearing, just, t just uh, tap the screen and let's heart it up. So here's the thing, guys. Um, let me give you an example. There's a uh, United States code. When people are using social media, they're using the internet, they're using email, they're texting, they're making phone calls. If they're committing fraud, if they're committing crimes, uh, those are uh, not only interstate crimes, but they're interstate crimes. They're crimes that are taking place using the digital platforms across the United States. When that happens, not only is state jurisdiction invoked, but you have federal jurisdiction. Federal crimes are being committed, okay? And whether it's a small dollar amount or a large dollar amount, let me give you an example of a federal crime. It's, it's under the U.S. Code, okay? Under 18 U.S. Code 1343, it has to do with fraud by wire, radio, or television. And this is one of many U.S. codes, so which code would apply to the situation that you're a victim in? You have to let the U.S. attorneys figure that out. That's not your problem. All you need to do is report the crime. But I'm giving you an example under this particular code, and this is going to knock your socks off. Listen to this. It says, whoever having devised or intending to devise any scheme or, or artifice to defraud or for obtaining money or property by means of false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, or promises, and then communicates that online, okay? That person is looking to up to 20 years in federal prison. This is a big deal, 20 years in federal prison. This particular code section uh, also has a $1 million fine and a 30-year imprisonment clause, okay? So depending on what exactly is being represented, what exactly is being done, 
we're not talking about county jail. We're not talking about a small slap on the wrist, folks. We're talking about, in some cases, people are looking at 20 to 30 years in prison and up to a million dollars in fines. And that's a big deal. And the reason I'm okay with that, like I said before, is because when somebody misrepresents and takes advantage of other people, when you have a fox in the hen house that harms other people, and this is happening every day around the world, it makes it even more difficult for honest business people. It makes it even more difficult for honest human beings to do business and build relationships, okay? And that's, you know, that's a uh, incidental uh, flowing problem from what we're seeing online. And once again, that's too bad because there's never been a better way to engage, to, to interact, to help other people than uh, using the online platforms, than using live streaming platforms. But all of a sudden, when this kind of stuff happens, it raises doubt, it raises issues. And that's why, uh, that's why we all need to team together I'm just looking at some of the responses here. As a community, Alice uh, Chase is absolutely, uh, Elise Gates Chase, as a community, we need to uh, get together. Absolutely, I'm sorry, it's going by so fast, I apologize. So here's the thing, you guys. What I would always recommend, just as a lawyer, is that if you are the victim of fraud, if you're the victim of any type of illegal conduct or activity where the bottom line is you're out money, and somebody that promised you something didn't perform, and you're getting one excuse after another as to why you're not getting paid back, you're getting one excuse after another why your phone calls, your emails, your texts, your direct messages aren't being responded to, um, you know, go to your local police department. You may be the 10th, 20th, or 30th person in line filing a complaint against that particular individual. And I'll tell you another little issue we see with people that are just highly skilled at committing fraud, okay, highly skilled at defrauding others, and I'm talking about the Bernie Madoffs of the world, okay, is they're the type of people where they can look you in the eye and they can make you believe what they're trying to tell you. They're masters of deflecting what's really going on and trying to get your attention on another unrelated topic, okay, they're masters at that. They're masters of making you feel sorry for them. They're masters of turning things around and making it everything about why you feel guilty for pointing the finger at somebody when that same person is the one that's been defrauding many, many other people. So you need to be careful about that, you guys. You can't get sucked into the fox's M.O. while he or she is walking into the hen house, okay? There are all types of state and federal laws. We've got RICO. We've got uh, many, many laws under the U U.S. Code. Each state has laws that protect people from online fraud, online crimes. And so the point is, you guys, is think about when you're dealing with somebody, are they, are, did they make a mistake and are they fessing up to it? Uh, are you one of 100 people that they've defrauded? Uh, are they trying to mitigate their, ex their mistake with uh, excuses? with other things happening to try to deflect what you should be focusing on, okay? Because that's what people who are master defrauders do. So you need to be aware of that. So here's the thing, Thursday night, I'm going to be uh, a guest on a blab with uh, two or three different police officers from Southern California. They have a, a weekly blab on Thursday nights. I'm gonna bring it up and show you real quick. Hang on a second, here it is. And I want you guys to join me. And the police officers are going to give you some tips and suggestions. Let me show you real quick, hang on. From internet fraud. So it's the lawenforcement.social, that's, that's their blog. This blab about online fraud, cheats and liars, protect and prosecute. It will be Thursday night, I believe it's eight, uh, let me see, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There it is right there. And uh, Officer Mike Byers hosts the show, I believe. Definitely click in, join the show Thursday night. Listen to what trained police will tell you about the problem of Internet fraud. Listen to how trained police officers will tell you what their thoughts are on people that defraud others. I will tell you right now, and, and it's the same in my industry, in my profession, 
We have zero tolerance for it, okay? There are no excuses. Uh, when I hear people talk about uh, it's okay to fudge the numbers, it's okay to, 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 to exaggerate a little bit in exchange for selling this or that, no, it's not. Since when did that become okay? Since when did lying about anything that you're trying to sell online, much less offline, become okay? I mean, is that the type of society we become? You know, when somebody looks you in the eye digitally and says, well, that's what everybody else is doing, so I'm doing it too. No, that's not what everybody else is doing. That's not what the good business people are doing. Good business people are following the rules. They're walking their talk. They're honest. They're following the law. They're not exaggerating things. Okay, it's never okay. Lying is never okay. So, you know, don't buy into just because somebody tells you, well, that's what everybody else is doing. So I did, no, that's not what everybody else is doing, at least not all the other honest people. Okay, if there are other people out there that are defrauding consumers online, maybe they are doing it. You know, and like I said, maybe they're all grouping together and that's why it's okay, but it's not. So let's raise the bar, bar on our ethics, our business ethics. Let's raise the bar on being transparent. There are no excuses, okay? You do things the right way. You do things the right way and you tell the truth and that's what keeps people from being hurt. That's what keeps people from being financially destroyed. That's what keeps people uh, from not being able to sleep at night because they're so emotionally distressed. So I have zero tolerance for all this bullshit. And uh, regardless of who you are or where you are committing internet fraud, committing internet crimes, there is no excuse, okay? Um, don't go on my shows. Don't follow me on the social platforms. I don't want to see your name in the comments. I don't want anything to do with you because people will associate you with who you hang out with. Okay, it's really important online to hang out with the right people. Okay, don't get sucked into, well, everyone else is doing it, so you should do it too. That's a bunch of bullshit. Keep the bar high, have high business ethics, walk your talk, practice the golden rule, don't put up with anything from anyone else that isn't 100% on the up and up, 100% transparent. And um, let's just, you know, reach out and be part of a community to help each other, okay? And helping each other means, uh, and I'm telling you guys, once again, 30 years of doing this, the last person I will ever wrap my arms around and, and tell them that I forgive them and tell them that I love them is somebody that's defrauded me, my family, or my friends, because that's not the way it works in the real world, okay? People have issues, criminals have issues, and they're not gonna be a part of my life. So, my takeaway, guys, is do your due diligence before doing business with anybody online, okay? Use Google, use some of the investigative databases. If you have a friend that's a lawyer, we tap into a lot of really great databases. We can run criminal background checks, we can run business status checks on people and entities, that's just a great way to check somebody out before you write a check, before you send money by PayPal, before you do anything else, okay? And um, so, you know, that's it. I'm gonna hop off my soapbox. Once again, this isn't about anybody or anything in particular. What it is about, about is about raising your awareness towards internet fraud, internet crimes, and just really wrapping your head about around the fact that it's not okay. And excuses for defrauding people are not okay. Uh, oh, hey, Andy, thank you. I appreciate it. It's just not okay. So once again, if anyone's involved in anything like that, just stay away from me. Stay out of my life. And you know what? Stay away from my friends online. Don't go to their shows. Don't comment in their comment sections. Uh, just, just disassociate yourself from all the good people, all the good people that I like to consider my friends and who I associate with. That's the bottom line, and there are no exceptions. So, guys, I'm going to run. We've got a, a new show this afternoon. It's actually in about 35 minutes with Alex Kahn. It's the show.live with Jen Hoverstad. She's my co-host, and we'll be talking about Alex, about how he's using live streaming to uh, basically change the world. It's going to be an awesome show. So make sure you guys stop by 2 p.m. Eastern time on the show.live. You can check the link to our Blab. That's the platform we'll be using and uh, we'd love to see you there. Okay, that's it. I'm not gonna talk about this problem anymore, but you guys be careful. Before you start 
loving, hugging, and forgiving people, you know, I'm just telling you guys, be careful because a lot of times this is ongoing, long-term, repetitive conduct, okay? And I don't want to see anybody get hurt, all right? Regardless of what state you're in, regardless of who the perpetrator is or what the topic of the crime is, just be careful. All right, guys, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Reach out with any questions. Otherwise, make the rest of today your masterpiece, and I'll see you guys 2 p.m. on the show.live. Thanks, guys. Bye.